Good morning, and I hope you've had a good week. Um, seems like we've had all seasons within seven days, doesn't it, this week? Thunderstorms and um, the hottest day ever, it felt like, on Thursday. Um, so we've had it all this week, and I hope you've enjoyed the weather, the thunderstorms and the really hot weather. I'm going to start this morning by reading um, just a few verses of Psalm 92. It's good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to make music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy what your hands have done. How great is your works! Lord, how profound your thoughts. The Psalms very often speak of looking at the world around us and just evoking us to praise God um, about what we see around us. And they often um, bring words to us which we're trying to say something and we just haven't got the words to articulate um, the praise we want to make of God. And the Psalms help us out a lot there. And the other day I was walking up in the woods with Jake behind um, Clevedon Court and that is the most amazing place, those woods. It's the most beautiful woods I've ever seen, ever I think. And it just, like the song said, it evoked me to praise God for his creation and what I was seeing around me. And the words of a song came into my head and I won't tell you what the song is just at the moment. Um, but I use the words which were written by somebody else, somebody else to praise God on that occasion. And we'd probably been walking about 20 minutes, half an hour, um, when the thunder started. And it was so loud and it was just constant thunder. Just a few spots of rain. But I thought we better get back to the car as quick as we can so we went as fast as we could back to the car with all the time this rumbling of thunder going along and luckily we got back to the car just as it absolutely tipped down with rain um, in fact it was so bad I could hardly see when I was trying to drive us back home and we had to sit in the car for quite some time um, before we could rush into the house so I thought it'd be quite a nice idea over the next few weeks to look at meanings and history behind some of our um, most well most well known hymns, um, and because when I when I thought of that song, it's just the wonder of God's creation in the woods. Um, that song took on a really significant meaning, and it was really helpful for me at that time. And I won't tell you what the hymn is, which we are going to be looking at this morning um, straight away. You play a little game and see if you can guess what the hymn is. You might have already guessed it by what I've already said. Um, but I, I'll begin to tell you the, the, just, it's, the history of it covers many, many years. So I'll begin to tell you the history of it then see if you can um, guess which song it is. And the story begins with a Swedish man called Carl Boberg. Um, and he, like me, experienced this sudden thunderstorm. Um, the power of it was amazing. And, and then immediately it was followed by brilliant sunlight. And when the thunderstorm had finished and the world became bright, um, he was just um, so aware of the birds singing and the brightness of God's creation. And um, so he just listened and watched the brilliance of God's world. And then he fell on his knees and just worshipped God um, for what he was seeing around him. And um, part of his worship was that he actually wrote a poem. And uh, the poem is the first two verses of the song, which uh, the hymn which we're going to be looking at this morning. Have you got an idea what the hymn is yet? Um... It's apparently it's the second most popular hymn in England. And the first two verses says, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world 
your hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the birds and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art. Several years after that, Carl, um, the writer of those, that poem, was attending a church service and he recognised one of the new songs which um, they were singing at that service um, because it was actually the words um, to his poem. So unbeknown to him, um, somebody has put the words of his poem to music and um, it was translated from there into first German and then Russian and was, was used quite widely. But this isn't the end of the story. Um, and the full song wasn't even ready yet. This part of the story takes us to London in the 20th century, where a man called Stuart Wesley Keane Hine was born. Uh, he was born into a Christian family. In fact, he was dedicated in a Salvation Army service right at the early days of the Salvation Army. At the age of 14, he got saved and he married his wife later. And in the 1930s, God led him and his wife to the Ukraine as missionaries. Um, while there, he heard this song being sang, um, it, actually in Russian, and he loved it so much that he began to use it in his own evangelical and outreach services. Um, and he paraphrased the song from Russian into his own native language of English. As the couple travelled around telling people of Jesus, their strategy was that every time they went to, they would try to make contact with any local Christians who were already living in the town. So they arrived at this one town and they spoke to the first local they said, and uh, they seen and they said, is there any Christians living here? And he pointed them in the direction of the house of a Christian who was living in the local area. And even before um, the hinds reached the house, um, they could hear this praising and this loud noise going on from inside the house. So they stood and listened for a while. And it turns out that this couple had been telling their neighbours uh, about Jesus using the book of John. And that day they had got to the crucifixion um, and the, the Easter story and they were just so filled with the Holy Spirit and the promise of this redemptive power and that God loved them so much he would do that for them that they were just praising God. And so um, Carl stood at the um, door of the house, he didn't actually go in, but he took, took notes of everything which was being said, the, the phrases and the sentences being said by these new Christians. And out of the things he wrote down, he actually came up with this third verse to that song. And when I think how God, God his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my saviour God to thee, how great thou art. After that, political events um, with the genocidal famines um, of Stalin and then um, Hitler's expansion into Czechoslovakia and Poland, meant that and the Hein family had to return to England. And this is our second connection with the song, that um, they actually returned to Somerset. And while they were there, they here, they continued um, with their uh, missionary work. And um, they worked amongst displaced Polish and Russian people who had come to the camps in England. And while there, they, he met a, mush, a Russian man who told him his testimony and his story. Uh, and at the end of the war, this man had become separated from his wife. Now, before that, she was a Christian and talked a great deal about her faith 
to her husband, but he resisted and didn't get saved. But after they became separated, he actually gave his life to Jesus and got saved. And his passion, his life, the thing he wanted most in life was to, to actually tell his wife that he got saved and to actually worship God together with her. And um, he said to Carl, I'm not, not sure that that will ever happen. I don't even know if she's alive. But even if she is, the difficulty is trying to locate her anywhere in the world. It's just going to be impossible, really. And he said, what I'm looking forward to most, whether she's alive or dead now, is that I know one day we will meet again in heaven and we will kneel before God together and praise him together. And that was his testimony. That's what he wanted most in the world. And from that experience, Hind wrote this fourth verse. When Christ shall come in shouts of acclamation to take me home, what joy will fill my heart. Then I will bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my saviour God to thee, how great thou art. So this morning, if we're looking out of our window or we go for a walk later on and we see the amazingness of God's creation. If we're just quietly contemplating the fact of the Easter story and the fact that Jesus died for us because God loved us so much that he sent his only son um, so that we can just have restoration and forgiveness and be united with God. Or maybe we're just kneeling quietly before God. Maybe we're just weary of the world at the moment. And just as that man was who longed for his wife um, to be with him once more. Wherever we are this morning, whatever situation we find ourselves in this morning, we can unite. Maybe you could sing this song, you all know it. Maybe you could just sing this song um, to yourself, knowing that you're united with your church family in this knowledge um, that God created the world and it allows us to share it and enjoy it with him. Um, that Jesus died for, for the whosoever, Jesus died for us. And that one day, I mean, one day we're going to be united in church again, let's be honest. But one, one day we're going to be united with all the saints who's gone before us in heaven. And we're going to sing together. Then sings my soul, my saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my saviour God to thee, how great thou art. Let's pray together. Amazing God, we look at the works of creation and how you care for the world and how you made it to not only be awe-inspiring to look at, but to listen to and to touch and to taste and to smell. A feast for all our senses and we say how great thou art. We think of Jesus' work on the cross, the gift of grace, not deserved or earned, or, but given freely out of your love for us. And we say together, how great thou art. We think of our eternity when we will be filled with joy at being in your presence forever. And we say, how great thou art. Our souls sing out to you, how great thou art. Lord, bless us this morning. Help us to see and recognise your work in our world and your work in our lives. Your works which are continually working for our good. We praise and thank you. Amen. Amen. And we'll see you next week.